Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on setting up a direct dial number on Surgery Connect. This session is going to last approximately 20 minutes, and if you can remain muted for me, please, during the session and ask any questions through the meeting chat. I'll keep that open on my screen and then answer any questions there for you. Any questions that we're not able to answer during the session will be added to the frequently asked questions section on the webinar web page. Uh, we're also hosting the webinars now on YouTube, so you can access them wherever you are as well. Now, direct dial numbers can be set up for individual users or groups to allow calls to come straight through to them, no matter where they are working or which device they're using to receive those calls. So during this session, we're going to be looking at accessing the service delivery console, which is where we'll be um, setting up the call flow for the direct dial number. We'll look at accessing the numbers section, as well as looking for your unassigned numbers that you may have within the practice. We'll also look at using the direct dial uh, number template and how to add further options into that call flow once you've created the flow there. Finally, we'll look at the configuration console in the user profile. Uh, where you can change the default settings for anything that you're setting up within the service delivery console. So to access the service delivery console, as normal, you can either go via the menu, which is the three lines just next to your initials at the top right hand corner of any of the consoles once you've logged in. Or you can go directly through the single sign on page once you've logged in and select the service delivery console from there. Once in the service delivery console, you'll have five menus at the top of the page and we need to access the numbers section in order to see if you have any spare numbers for the practice that you can then set up as a direct dial number. So clicking on numbers will then take you into the list of numbers and call flows that you currently have set up for the practice. Now just at the top of the list, we've got some filters here. Um, so you can actually filter for any unassigned numbers, which will be numbers that aren't currently being used for a particular call flow. So to click on the filter, that will then bring up just a list of the unassigned numbers you have. So these will be the spare numbers then that you have within the practice. And you can select any of those numbers to create them as a direct dial number. I'm going to use the 365400 number here um, and to create the call flow for that number, I can just click on the blue edit pen on the same row as the number that I want to use. That will then open up a pop up. And if you selected the blue uh, via the blue pen, it will bring the number into the pop up straight away for you. You can then complete the other uh, sorry, the other information needed. So that would be the name of the call flow. Although if you're doing a direct dial call flow, it will name it automatically for you when you select the user. And then there's also the templates that you can use to set up the call flow initially. You can also click on the add new call flow button just at the top of the table. That will open up the same pop up. But rather than having the number pre selected, you can then click in the drop down and select the number from the list of unassigned numbers that will come up when you select that. You can then select the number from that uh, drop down and that would be exactly the same as using the blue pen then and it will then select that number for this particular call flow for you. Once you've selected the number, you can then go on and use the templates to begin setting up the template there. A direct dial call flow for a particular user you would use the DDI call flow template. If you want him to set up a direct dial number for a group of users, once you've created that group in the service delivery console, you can then use the simple group call flow to create a call flow with a direct dial. So you can use the simple group call flow to set up a call flow that will take a call directly into a group of users. Whereas you're going to use the DDI call flow to set up the users uh, for a direct dial number for an individual user. So I'm going to use the DDI call flow to set up a call flow for a new user that we set up last time. Once you select the DDI call flow, it will then ask uh, which user you want to 
allocate to that particular number. So remember with Surgery Connect, the numbers go with people rather than with phones. So whichever user you select, that direct dial number then will look for that user, no matter where they're logged in or which device they're using to make and receive their calls. You'll see a preview of the call flow in the preview box when you select the template. To select the user, just click in the drop down. You will then have a list of the users that are currently set up for your practice and you can select that user's name from the drop down there. That will then automatically name the call flow as that particular user's di direct dial. Once you've completed the information in the pop-up, click on Save Call Flow, and that will then create the call flow as it's shown in the preview window for you. If you then remove the filter for your unassigned numbers, you'll then see the complete list of all the numbers for the practice again. And here you can see that we've now got our 365-400 number that's set up as John Smith's direct dial. Now, once you've set that up via the template, that is the call flow completed. However, if you wanted to amend that to add further options, then you can click on the blue graph icon, which is your edit button, which will then open XFlow and select the call flow that you just created there. Once XFlow opens on a new tab, you'll have the XFlow workspace. So up at the top of the screen, you're going to have the name of the call flow. So you know you've selected the right one. So indeed, we're looking at John Smith's DDI call flow here. You've then got the functions at the top of the um, XFlow page here, where you can select, edit and test your call flow. Not too much to test on this one. So the test overrides will uh, force a calendar into a particular mode. No calendars on this particular call flow as it's a direct dial so there shouldn't be any need to test any overrides there and then down the left hand side we've got our icons that we can drag and drop onto the workspace so that we can create blocks within the call flow to change the actions within this uh, default call flow here so if you wanted to add on a voicemail for this particular user once the call flow is set up and you've accessed xflow you can just drag and drop the icon for user voicemail onto the workspace. As you drag that on, it will then ask you which user you need to set the voicemail up for. That's obviously going to match the user that you've set up on the call flow here. So I'm going to select John. And then click on add. That will then add on the voicemail block to the call flow here, which adds a standard voicemail. Um, with a set message. Now to link that up to our call flow here, I don't want the system to hang up automatically um, if John is busy and on the phone or if he doesn't answer. So I'm going to click on the little hang up block on the workspace, which will then give me dotted lines around that particular block. I can then use delete either up at the top of the screen here in the functions or I can use delete on my keyboard and that will then delete that block and the arrows that are going to it. Now that we've got empty outputs for busy and no answer, I can join those to the voicemail box here, which will then give us voicemail if John is on the phone or doesn't answer the call. Remember, that's just connecting the dots with the two options then that you want to go to that voicemail. You can divert calls to um, other users or groups by adding on the relevant icons to the call flow. But remember, when you create a call flow and any changes that you make to it, you then need to deploy the changes in order to activate that new call flow. Now I've added voicemail on there and um, when a voicemail is received, it will send you an email and in that email it will give you the details to access the voicemail on the phone and you can actually change the message um, via the handset on the desk. There is also a message button on the handsets, 
So if you're logged into a phone, you can just click on the little envelope icon on the hard keys and that will then dial this number automatically for you. If you're logged in, you then won't need to enter your service ID or user ID. You'll just need your PIN in order to re-record the message directly via the handset on the desk. So the PIN number is accessed through the configuration console and we'll have a look at that at the end. But on the general tab in the user profile, you will then see the PIN number for the voicemail for Surgery Connect there. And that PIN number will be needed if you change the message via the phone. The alternative option um, would be to add in a new prompt in front of the voicemail. Um, that would then read out the prompt first, uh, giving the patient the information that they need to leave in the message. And then the standard mailbox there will just tell them the person's not available. Please leave their message after the tone. And when they stop talking or hang up, it will stop the recording there. So this particular call flow, um, I have selected that uh, any calls that John isn't able to answer on his direct dial number will actually look for Adam and see if Adam's available. If Adam's available and it puts the call through, I've also changed the whisper that Adam will receive, so it tells them that this is a call through John Smith's direct dial number. If Adam's not free or if he's already on the phone, it will then divert to our reception group so that somebody then can take a message for John and again, the whisper on that has been amended, so it now says that it's coming through from John Smith's direct dial number. If you've got quite a large call flow, if you use the auto arrange function up at the top, it will rearrange it on the page so it's a little tidier and an easier to read for you. And don't forget to deploy that call flow when you've finished making your changes and you're happy with the way that the call is going to flow through the system there. Any changes that you make um, are saved on the system initially, so you'll see them on the screen. If it's a group um, call flow, you will have a test number that you can call um, and any changes are saved under the test number first of all. With individual direct dials, you won't have a test number, but obviously you can ring the number directly and just check that call flow once it's been deployed. Now, in order to change any uh, default settings, you'll need to access the configuration console. So again, um, if you've already logged into the service delivery console, you could visit the menu, which is just up at the top of the screen on the right hand side next to your initials, and you can go to straight to the configuration console from the service delivery console. Alternatively, you could revisit your single sign on page um, and then click on the configuration console to open that console as well. When you access the configuration console down the left hand side, you'll have similar menus to those that we have on the service delivery console. Um, so we've got our users here and there's also a dashboard that will tell you how many users you've got set up, how many groups and also how many calendars you're using. You can either click on the users in the dashboard or you can click on users in the menu on the left hand side and that will then take you through to the list of users that you currently have set up on the service delivery console. Within the configuration console, you can then search for the user that you need. So I'm going to search for John. We've now got John Smith's details here and I can use the edit button just down at the bottom of his uh, user profile in order to view any default settings or to change those settings as well. So when I click on the pen, that will then open up John's user profile um, on the general tab, as we saw earlier, you can access the PIN number for the voicemail if you want to change the voicemail message using the desk phone. Um, you can also set as a supervisor reset passwords directly from this screen if people can't access their NHS email address to reset it themselves. On the numbers tab here, you can add in personal numbers. Um, so you can add in a mobile or a home number. That would then mean that John could divert his calls to that device. Um, even though it's a direct dial number, remember that the numbers go with people rather than phones. So a direct dial number, even if John is working remotely, will go to which, wherever he's logged in and put the call through on whichever device he's actually using. So if the mobile number's in there and John's selected his mobile, calls to the direct dial number will also go straight through to that mobile. 
When John answers a call, he's going to get the same whisper in the, as he would do in the practice. So if it's coming through on a direct dial number, it will say direct call, just like it does on your internal short dial number. You can also change um, the number of time that the phone rings, or sorry, the amount of time rings before uh, the call moves on to the next action in the call flow. So the default is 60 seconds, so it's uh, sorry, 30 seconds. So it's going to ring for 30 seconds on each device before it then moves on to the next action within that call flow. So with the call flow that we'd got set up that then is going to look for Adam and then the reception team, it's going to ring John's phone for 30 seconds before it then moves on to Adam's phone and then it will ring Adam's phone for 30 seconds if that's his settings as well before it moves on to the reception team. On the missed calls um, tab up at the top of the user profile, you can uh, specify what happens if you miss a call either on a direct dial number um, or through any groups. So you've got a missed call notification. As a default, that's set up as not to notify anyone. But in the drop down here, you can select either email, text or text or both if you would prefer. Uh, before you can receive text notifications of any missed calls, you would need to add the mobile number to the numbers tab within the user profile so that those notifications can be sent out. On the voicemail tab here, you can set the uh, change the default settings for voicemail. So as a default, it's not going to delete any messages until you actually physically delete them. You'll have 10 maximum messages within your voicemail box and those voicemails are for one and a half minutes long. Any of those settings can be changed on an individual user basis and that will then change the settings for the voicemail box that's added to their uh, call flow. Down at the bottom again we've got voicemail notification options so you can either have an email um, sent to you when a voicemail comes through. Surgery Connect will attempt to attach a copy of the voicemail to the email if you select an email. However, sometimes the NHS firewall blocks those attachments, so you can still access those voicemails through the single sign-on uh, if you have voicemail set up on your user or you're a member of a group with voicemail on as well. Just like um, our missed calls, you can send a notification directly to a mobile number. Again, you'd need to make sure that that mobile number is added to the numbers tab in the configuration console in order to send out that notification to a mobile um, when there's a voicemail message been received. Any changes that you make, remember that you need to save those changes within the configuration console before they take effect. So during this session, we've had a look at accessing the service delivery console. We've looked at accessing the numbers section so that we can look for our unassigned numbers and then create a direct dial using our direct dial template. We've also looked at adding further options through the call flow in Xflow and how to change the default settings within the configuration console.